left fielder number 24, Reese O'Farrell. So I'm being told right now our video problems and our live connection problems have been fixed. Welcome to Jack Fish Baseball here at Welton Stadium. We're at the top of the third inning. Don't worry, the game did not start actually as scheduled at 105 p.m. It was a 305 opening pitch this afternoon. It is 1 0 for the Golden Royal. Royal. Haven't been missed much. The Jack, the Jack, the Jack the Fish has been shut out by Angel Lolona. Almost, almost every, every single, single ground ball has gone to the third baseman. Base. And he's an execute every, every single, single ground, ground ball, ball and send it over to the first base with Rick Murray. Murray. Jack, Jack is still looking for a base runner, runner here, here in the bottom, bottom of the third. third. 2 0 -oh count. count. To Reese O'Farrell. O'Farrell. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, call call one around. around. Yeah. 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 The count to the one. So the count to one. Two outs here in the bottom half of the third. Starting, starting pitcher, pitcher this afternoon, afternoon for the Royal Royal. Royal. Yuri Yabatas. Yabatas has been in the ball game with a 7, seven ERA, 7.02. 7 He's pitched in 16 and 2 3rd innings. Third innings. Struck, Struck out 12. 12. Right now right it's fastball, fastball really, really, really keeping the Jackfish Jack offense in bay. Jackfish is not able to get many good hits off Yabatas. The last time the Royal Royal were killed, Jackfish. Monsters have dropped 16 runs. Run. Their season's high. high. Final score, score there, there, 16 to 8. O'Farrell puts one, one to right, right field, field off, off the bat. High fly, fly ball. ball. And, and O'Farrell is, is retired. retired. The Jack Fish will be up, up three down. down. As Jeff McLeod retires O'Farrell. We'll go to the top of the fourth. We're moving right along here on Father's Day. Glad to be a part of this one. Happy Father's Day. Sit back. We'll go to the top of the fourth. Next, next, here on All right, who's ready for a t-shirt toss? Our diamond crew looking for the loudest. So once, so once again, again, if you're just joining us, welcome, welcome to Wellington Stadium. Stadium. We've, We've got, got set for a 105 opening pitch, pitch two-hour two rain delay, delay, which started, started this game, game at, at 305. Got to thank, thank all, all the great, great hard ground, ground crew and all, all our volunteers that put, put in the effort, effort to get this ball game, game underway. underway. Jeff McLeod here for the Golden Royals. Royals. It's so First baseman, Rick Murray. And that'll bring, that'll bring up Rick, Rick Murray, Murray to the plate. This is the second, second time for the order. order. For the, for the Guelph Royals. Only run the ball ball game real, real early. early. On, a On a sack, sack fly, fly that, that cashed in, in Kyle Push. Push. What nothing, what nothing that's where we sit, sit here in the top of the fourth. Second meeting between two ball clubs this season. The Jackfish won the first one, 16 8. Oh, 
one, one count, count here. Nobody, nobody out. out. Run, run, run first, first for Rick Murray. Murray. Play, play, play. Fastball, Fastball went, went down, down low. low. Off, off the end, the end of the bat. Foul. foul. To move, to move the count out in favor of Rick Smith, 0-2. Murray, Murray bat batting one for the fifth. Murray batting one for the seventh season. Has three RBIs. No homers. And he's 0-1 this afternoon. Now the 0-2 delivery. Ring them up, counter as a strike. It's the second strike of the ball game for Matt Quinn-Smith. That's another one. Who's this now? Who's this now? What's the sign say? Catcher Brandon Keys. Is that the three? Oh. Yeah, it's the third, but honestly. So a scorecard correction, card correction that is the third strike, strike of the ball game. game. Sleeping, Sleeping upstairs, upstairs here in the press box this afternoon. Tired, Tired from, from that long, that, 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 uh, long, long rain delay. delay. <laughs> <laughs> was on the road, road last, last night. night. All the way, way to Laura. Not, not far from well, of course. Got, Got back late. late. Watching and supporting the local GDB team. Felt that we were on Mohawk. 14-4. Local, local GGB, GGB, a lot of local sports, sports here in the vibrant Road, Road City. City. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it in there for you, Ron. Yeah. One's, One's across, across the board here, run around first base. Hello. Clinger Smith, Smith Road, pitch 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 two, two and one. one. Okay, so you, uh, I'll meet you down. Brendan Keyes batting, batting 116, batting average, 543. Has an RBI. RBI. Yeah. He's over for three. three. A couple, couple weeks, weeks ago, ago and that 16 to 16 to 8 decisive victory for the Jackfish. Walked twice, twice, though. This, this time, time is over one. one. Now, now count in favor of Keyes, three, three, three and one. 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 This is Matt, Matt Clinger Smith. Smith. First outing, outing against, against the Guelph Royals this season. Clinger Smith. There's a pitch that gets a high point ball to Wilson Soriano. Coriano makes an unorthodox catch. catch. But nevertheless, he is retired on the top line. Wilson well, Soriano well, giving everyone a little scare here at the ballpark. Who's usually money in the bill? Last two games. Soriano is one of those guys that, that come up with showtime, showtime plays. plays. But as of late, last couple of games, games just kind of able to find his rhythm. rhythm. Missed a Missed couple of routine, routine ground balls. balls. Couldn't make, make a catch, catch on a high fly ball. ball. And now, now seems to struggle with that ball high, high in the clouds. clouds. Outside, Outside pitch, pitch gets, gets away from Matt Romero. Pass, 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 pass ball, ball. Runner, runner, runner will easily, easily advance to second. Well, well Foyles come, come into today's ball game. Tight the standings with Jack. And now they have a runner in scoring position. I want nothing. One out count. count. That, that was the first, first pitch that got away. away. Two, Two outs out here. here. Right, right out, out the, the back. back. Head up piece. piece. Takes, Takes his time, time to submit. Good cool common collective throw from Nolan Head up piece. And now the Jackfish will lead the runner for the Gulf Royals. Grand Red second base. We'll go bottom of the fourth. It's one up the Royals here on Jackfish TV. We want to thank all the families who have registered their kids for the up-and-coming Ron Jackfish Summer Baseball Camp.
leading off the fourth inning for the Jackfish, second baseman, number 13, Brandon Nicholson. Your catcher, number eight, Matt Lee Romanin. Soggy Welland Stadium. So now that brings up the former London Major Andrew Mercier. Mercier now with a runner on first, two outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Lone run of the ball game. Belongs to Kyle Cush in the first. Fastball outside. Embattis pitch count. Very respectable. So far through four innings. Mercier off the end of the bat. Right to the left fielder though for the Royals and that will be it. The Jackfish able to get a base runner in the fourth inning but no runs come across the plate. It is one nothing Guelph as we go to the top of the fifth. You're watching Jackfish Baseball on Jackfish TV.
As we get set for the top half of the fifth inning here, still 1-0 for the Guelph Royals, Matt Klinger-Smith, who's had a tremendous baseball career, was, of course, a Canisius Griffin, a Golden Griffin, rather, from 2002 to 2005, and now sits the head coach of the baseball program at Niagara County Community College in Sanborn, New York. Klinger Smith works here in the top half of the fifth. One on one count with nobody away. Into the dirt. Moves the count to two and one. Two and one count, nobody out. Guelph Royals battling the well and Jackfish on what we thought would be a rain out game. Off the end of the bat of Hammond. Across, Matt Schmidt makes the catch and he's retired. We go back to the top of the order for the third time. Kyle Cush now batting for the Guelph Royals. This is, we mentioned, the third time through the order. Klinger Smith, off speed pitch. Down the middle for a strike. Very defensive ball game so far, only 1 0. As the veteran Matt Klinger Smith settling in on the mound. Another pitch, off speed pitch, that one more a little inside, but catches the corner. One and two. You talk to Matt and you talk about what he's done on and off the field. and He's more proud of what he's done off the field as a ball coach. As that one, pop fly to Soriano. Easily makes the grab for the second out of the inning. You look at what Klinger Smith has done in his resume, he's actually coached three MLB draft picks, which includes Sean Jamison, the 16th rounder of the Oakland Athletics, Christian Barkowski, the 27th rounder of the Atlanta Braves, and Christian Lindsey Young, who also went to Oakland in the 23rd round back in 2010. Two outs, one and oh count. Pitch inside to Barlas. Backs him off the plate, 2-0. Oh. Two, oh. Two outs here in the top half of the fifth inning. Barlas was hit by a pitch at his first at bat. Seems to be okay as that one hit him in the ankle. And struck out of the second time at bat. Now he steps in with two outs, two and one count. That last pitch fouled back to the safety netting. Now the offering from Klinger Smith. Off speed pitch, high fly ball, a mile to the clouds and down. And Soriano makes the catch. So another pop fly catch from Soriano to end the top half of the fifth. Another scoreless inning. It's a one nothing ball game. Jackfish trying to find an answer as we go to the bottom of the fifth here on Jackfish TV.
So we were set to start at the bottom of the fifth inning, but the third base umpire, as Ben Mercier, who is umping third base, either took a ball or slipped. We were unable to see it up here in the press box, but was hunched over as he got up, in clearly in pain. Talking to Ricky Pelletieri, and now he's showing signs of a little life on the plate, on the third base foul line, though, rather, as he seems to be okay. Opening pitch, ball one. Danson at the plate for the Welland Jackfish here in the bottom of the fifth to lead things off. Yambatas on the mound, had a really strong outing so far. He's thrown four scoreless. The let's go Jackfish fans, the chant going amongst the fans here. By the way, announced attendance of the ballpark this afternoon, 973. 973 fans at Welland Stadium that stuck it out. A lot of them were here just before 12 o'clock, thinking it was a 1 o'clock start time. A lot of fans stuck it out, of course. We made those announcements. We, the game got pushed to 2. Then it was 2.30. Then the legendary Rocco and the grounds crew went out in the field, brought in all the city staff needed to keep this game alive. As Danson is walked to start things off for the Jackfish. Jan Battis will now face Matt Schmidt. Schmidt batting nine for 34, batting average of 264 in the season. Looking for his first home run as this is a guy that could easily poke one out of the ballpark. Shows bunt, but pulls back, ball one. One zero count with nobody away. Danson. He's on first base. Yam Battis. Off speed pitch gets Schmidt to swing early. He thinking it was a fastball. Yam Battis throwing mainly fastballs this afternoon. In his first outing at Welland Stadium this season. Junior Yam Battis now has pitched 60. 60 first pitch on the way here in the 50 in the fifth inning rather off the end of the bat gonna hit the roof here at Welland Stadium hits the literally top of the roof and goes into the parking lot as I look now the rain begins to fall once again here at Welland Stadium that's the last thing this ballpark needs is a little more rain two and two count with nobody out, runner on first. That's Brendan Datsun. Two and two delivery. Just pushed foul to keep the at-bat alive. Nolan Petapiece, Wilson Soriano, then Riso Farrell do up. A lot of baseball coming up for the Jackfish. Right back at it tomorrow night in Brantford. Now the pitch. Double play ball, though. Steps on second across the first in time. That's the first out of the inning and the second out. As once again a runner on, a double play is turned by the Guelph Royals. Guelph Royals defense impeccable so far. As there's a lot of veteran names out in the infield, As Angel Villalona has had a game so far. Foul ball. Right to where the inflatable is normally. But that has been taken down, I see, as I look to the right berm side. Oh, I see it now. I can see the base of it. Maybe it's bounced over a little bit. <laughs> Older kids got in there and bounced it over a little bit more right field. One ball, one strike, two outs on that double play ball. That brings us up 
to Nolan Petapis. Petapis batting 309 this season. Who's really improved his average in the last three or four games. That ball is going to drop foul as he was hit well to right field. So twos across the board here in the fifth inning. Two outs, two balls, two strikes. Jackfish, though, scoreless through four. And now Yem Battis ready. Here's the pitch. Chopped. And that will go foul. It just pulled left of the third base bag. Be sure to follow the Well and Jackfish on YouTube. All social media platforms where you can catch behind the scales. Last episode we had a few players on including Brent Colomb who sits to my left. Not a player. Owner Brent Colomb. And also a lacrosse referee. We talked about local sports here in the region. I believe he's refing a game tonight. As the Well and Jackfish support all community events, including Well and General's Lacrosse. As they host the Wallaceburg Red Devils tonight. Petapiece. Kind of couldn't get much on that one as the swing never went through. High fly ball to shallow right field. He is retired. Three outs through bottom five. We're going to the sixth. A one nothing ball game here at Welland Stadium. We'll be back. Top of the sixth inning is next on Jack's TV. And here we go in the top half of the sixth inning. As Angel Villalona, the Dominican Republican, will start things off for the Guelph Royals. A prospect, of course, of the San Francisco Giants. Been known as their number one prospect for a long time. As he has a strong bat, and we've seen in this afternoon's ball game, a very strong defender. The 28 year old from La Ramona, Dominican Republic. One on one count here as he goes against Matt Klinger Smith. Looking down to my left in the Jackfish Doug, Jackfish bullpen rather, Rich Carante. Just warming up and stretching out. No action yet so far into the bullpen for the Guelph Royals. One and two count, no away. Now Klinger, Miss Klinger Smith set. Here's the offering. Outside. Two and two count. Nobody away. The rain has stopped and the sun has come back out peeking through the clouds. Hopefully it could dry up this field a little bit. Jackfish though won't need it again until Saturday. Now the pitch. Pitch. 
Just pushed towards the first base, Matt Schmidt. And he'll beat Villalona to first. So now the left fielder, Riley Perk, steps in. This field, though, of course, does get a lot of use. The Jackfish, their home nights, Thursday nights, Saturday afternoons. The Chiefs and the Thorns, who play in the Niagara District Men's Senior League, use it on Wednesday and Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, rather. And, of course, high school baseball, which is wrapping up with exams coming up for most of the schools. High fly ball, deep to right field off the bat of Perks. Right to the wall, makes the catch. Right in front of section 308. And the fans out there applaud. And so do the fans. 973 of them agree with that beautiful catch from the right fielder this afternoon and Brandon Dadson. Also, be sure to catch Behind the Scales this week as the Jackfish will be at Empty Bellies Restaurant. Empty Bellies this Wednesday. Big food, big fun. We'll be doing an episode Behind the Scales where you can learn more about the Jackfish, learn more about the players. It's not all about stats, nothing about the actual baseball itself. We learn more about the players and how this team operates on Behind the Scales. That blooper will get behind Nolan Pettipis for a single for Jeff McLeod. Two outs, a two out single for Jeff McLeod. Which will bring up Rick Murray with McLeod on first. McLeod now two for three this afternoon. Came into the ball game 268 with one home run. 50 50 this afternoon should be a good pot though, as they've been selling pretty much since 11 30. Oh, and one count though, is that is fouled back over the safety netting to the roof. Only that solo run on the board belongs to the Guelph Royals. And that came all the way back in the first inning. Off-speed pitch gets Murray to swing. Moves the count to 0-2. Murray this afternoon 0-2 on the scorecard. As Brendan Keyes is on deck warming up. If needed. 0-2, oh, two, two outs. McLeod, he's on first base. Now the pitch. Ooh, outside. Look to be close down the middle. But Klinger Smith does not get awarded the strike. Now the count, one and two with two outs. One and two count, two away. Here's the offering. Runner going, McLeod's going to second. But it's off the end of the bat. Foul to the parking lot. McLeod had a rather good jump towards second. As we're heading towards the bottom of the order for the Guelph Royals. This is the third time through the order this afternoon. Rather quick ball game though. High fly ball. DeAndre Asbury Heath seems to Back pedal and have a lot of room. He's under it. Makes the catch. So we're scoreless. Only run of the board belongs to the Guelph Royals. That happened in the first. We've played five and a half. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Jackfish trying to find an answer and break the goose egg on Jackfish TV.
Welcome back to Welland Stadium. The Jackfish trail the Guelph Royals one to nothing. A complete polar opposite of the last game these two teams met. It is the second meeting of the season between these two ball clubs. Last time they met, the Jackfish won the ball game 16 to 8. Right now, though, it's a pitcher's duel. Matt Klingersmith so far has threw nearly 85 pitches. Yam Battis, 73. And now he's ahead of Showtime Wilson Soriano, 0 2 in the count. Wilson Soriano started off batting well over 350 and now has slipped to 245. He's got two home runs. Both of those home runs, by the way, came in Toronto. One of them was the first pitch of the ball game, and that was the Jackfish's second ball game of the season. Back at Christie Pitts on May 19th. Hit two runs that game. Both of them homers, and now he has eight RBIs in the season. Extended to try to reach for that one, but he poked it foul into the berm in right field. 0-2 oh, count, just working Yambatis' arm. Nobody out here for Soriano. Soriano, a chopper to second. Easily thrown over to Rick Murray, and Soriano is retired. Reese O'Farrell now up with Brendan Nicholson and the top of the order on deck. When you talk to the field manager, Brian Ezery, about this season so far, the Jackfish, and you talk about this little slip in these last four games, the Jackfish have gone all the way up to third in the standings and slipped to fifth after falling to five and seven. That one sliding over to foul territory and just couldn't get down in time as Riso Farrell poked one out to right field. He remarked about how professional this ball club is and how they know how they're going to be able to bounce back from difficult situations. A lot of good ball club, a lot of good players in this ball club rather. A lot of them coming over, of course, from the Burlington Herd, including Riso O'Farrell, who bats one for 13 of the season, only batting 0 076 is his average. Sub 100 average. High fly ball coming right towards the press box. As the fly ball went high above the press box here. Still looking for my first ball to come right up to me as I'm sitting right behind home plate. A chopper to the infield. The shortstop across the diamond. Not in time as this infield has just eaten up the Welland Jackfish bats this afternoon. Two away now as that we go back to the top of the order for Brendan Nicholson. Yeah, Battis, first pitch. Nicholson gets a piece of it and fouls back. And now this is where strong defensive teams have been able to keep teams off the scoreboard without getting any errors, of course, and this infield for the Guelph Royals this afternoon has been impeccable. Really confident throws from Villalona over to Ricky Martin. And, of course, Kyle Cush, who's playing second, has made a couple of plays himself. And then we just saw the shortstop, who was able to make that confident defensive play in Darius Ballers. Well, another three up, three down for the Welland Jackfish. We move right along. Quick ball game, even though it's 4.35 in the afternoon. We started only an hour and a half ago. We're going to the seventh. Jackfish trail, one nothing.
as PA announcer Ron Mahood starts things off, announcing Brendan Keyes to the batter's box. We've played six innings, only one run across the plate, and Kyle Cush touched that plate back in the first inning. We're half, a, half an inning away from taking me out to the ball game. As Klingersmith, the starting pitcher, continues the work for the Jackfish. We saw Rich Carante warming up his arm a little bit, just stretching. But no one is up in the bullpen for either side. That pitch misses down low inside. The count now 2-0. Excellent crowd on hand here. A lot of kids and a lot of minor baseball teams from Welland. As that hit from Keyes to the moon and back to right field. Danson makes the catch and Keyes is retired. That brings up the DH in Matt Pillarchuk. As I take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard, all eight teams in action this afternoon. A couple of finals to announce. Kitchener and Barry both winners this afternoon. Kitchener beat Toronto 4-2 at Christie Pitts in a quick ball game there. Two hours and 24 minutes. Hamilton on top of Brantford, also two hours and 24 minutes. 9-2 there. And Barry defeated London. 9-5 as Barry and Kitchener just running away with the top of the division standings. Well, we're in the top of the seventh. It's a one nothing Royal lead here at Welland Stadium. Happy Father's Day. If you're just joining us, once again, welcome to Welland Stadium. We thank you for being a part of this broadcast. 0-2 count here. One out here in the top of the seventh. That pitch from Klinger Smith, outside. One ball, two strikes. Pillar Chuck here. Keeps the at-bat alive. Got a piece of it. Sending it to the safety netting behind home plate. Batting 238 this season. And only has a couple RBIs to his name. Pillar Chuck batting in the eighth spot. Playing DH this afternoon. First of two meetings between these two teams in the next 48 hours. as the Jackfish will head down Highway 6 to take on the Guelph Royals. That pitch outside once again evens the count of 2-2. Two and two. two balls, two strikes, one out. Hammond on the mound warming up. Excuse me. Swinging a bat as he's on deck warming up. Off the roof, coming down into the grandstands. Makes the catch, a couple of bounces. As a tradition here at Welland Stadium, that foul ball caught from Winger, Ontario. It's always exciting to see the fans turn around and see it come down like a little Plinko board off the roof here at Welland Stadium. Nice off-speed pitch for the fourth strikeout of the afternoon. What that means, the Jackfish are one away from free chicken wings for everyone in attendance. Five free chicken wings to be exact. Compliments of Mama's Boys. Mama's Boys, a great sports bar here in Welland. They dare you to leave hungry. And if you've been there, the portion size is unbelievable. Absolutely a beautiful place to go after the game or before the game to grab a bite to eat. Mama's Boys, proud partner and sponsor of our strikeout challenge. Klinger Smith has all four this afternoon. And as the word wing spelled out, he needs to spell the word wings. He needs one more. Off the end of the bat, leaking and streaking a little bit foul, left side, and it goes foul, moves the count. And I believe the count is one and one. And the umpire does confirm that. One and one with two outs. And now the offering from Klinger Smith. Once again pushed foul. 
He's a strikeout away from turning on the Friars. Fans are starting to get anxious down below as this is one strike away from free chicken wings. Klingersmith gets set. Hammond trying to keep this inning alive. He's got two outs. The count one and two against him, though. And now the pitch. Down the middle. Umpire says no. And the tension rises here at the stadium. We will rock you easily converted to chicken wing. Two's across the board here in the top of the seventh. Now the pitch. Right back at Klinger Smith. Makes the catch, leaves the ball for the Guelph pitcher as we're going to go to the bottom of the seventh. What a hand eye and a reflex catch from Matt Klinger Smith. Jackfish scoreless once again for the Royals into the seventh. It's a 1 0 lead though. Take me out to the ball game is next here on Jackfish TV. So the Jackfish still looking for a run. First pitch, chopped right to the shortstop. Barless across the Smith in time. As the Maple, excuse me, the Guelph Royals retire the opening batter for the Jackfish. Anyone's ball game here in the bottom of the seventh. Fans were all fired up after taking me out to the ball game. Nearly a thousand people in attendance here in the vibrant Rose City at Welland Stadium. 973, the official announced attendance. And now Yambatis continues the work against DeAndre Asbury Heath. DeAndre Asbury Heath residing in South Carolina, from Columbia, South Carolina. Now to just try to settle in here with like a one and one count. Takes that pitch upstairs, and he gets ahead two and one. And now the pitch. Outside, DeAndre ahead three and one. Jackfish need to get something going here early in this bottom of the seventh. Only one out. Mercier, then Dadson, then Schmidt are the next three Jackfish batters. And we all know Mercier can easily send one to the wall or even over it. Try to get DeAndre Asbury Heath aboard. Swung on, fouled back, right between the legs of the, both the catcher and umpire.
three and two count. Full count here. One out. DeAndre Asbury Heath takes a breath and steps back in the batter's box. Jackfish have been really unable to get anything past the infield. But that time we won't need anything. No swing needed as Asbury Heath takes a walk to first base. And now, the DH, Andrew Mercier. So Andrew Mercier steps in, the lefty. Batting 321 this season, 9 for 28. Has seven RBIs. We need an RBI here to tie this ball game. Fastball outside. Ian Battis has thrown 49 strikes, 32 balls for 81 pitches. What a no count with one away. Asbury Heath on first base. A chopper though, right to Ian Battis. He's unable to make the catch. A race, Mercier is not there in time as he didn't have the speed, but it moves DeAndre Asbury Heath over to second. So two outs though, a runner in scoring position. So Brandon Dadson will bat. Brandon Skippy Dadson steps in and we learned Skippy Dadson of course from behind the scales. One of his jobs was to skip the dish drivers before he came to the ball club. 0 for 3. Andrew Mercier as he is retired. But he gets DeAndre over to second. That'll be it for Dadson. And the Jackfish once again get eaten alive by the Guelph Royal infield. We'll go to the top of the eighth. The Jackfish have zeros across the board. That has to change in the eighth or ninth. We'll go to the top of the eighth when we come back here on Jackfish TV. Quick ball game continues here in Welland. It's a 1-0 Guelph Royal lead. Glad you could be a part of this one here on Jackfish TV. Jackfish have been trying everything at the plate, but the infield of the Guelph Royals have been eating all the balls up and playing excellent defense. As this will be his 103rd pitch here this afternoon for Klinger Smith. A hard shot to right field. Could be a possible double. He's rounding first, going to second. 
Throw not in time. And a leadoff double for Kyle Cush. So Kyle Cush with a leadoff double for the Guelph Royals. Gets things going and gets the bats alive for the Royals. And this is what they did in the first inning. They've been able to get things going and really get the bats alive and get batters on the bases. The Jackfish have not had any success, though, at the plate this afternoon. Nobody out. Cush on second. Klinger Smith just steps off the mound and gets set again. One lefty is warming up in the bullpen for the Jackfish. And now the offering. Shows bunt. A little blooper bunt. Perfect. A throw to the first base. Not in time. So a perfectly placed bunt for Darius Barless. Barless has had an excellent game on defense in the field, but an, a perfectly placed bunt now has runners on the corners, first and third. So the training staff has come out and the infield has come together for Matt Klinger-Smith as he is a little shaken up after slipping trying to get that ball thrown to first base. We'll see if he's okay. We do know there is a lefty warming up. We just can't figure out exactly who it is. So Klinger Smith will stay in the ball game and face on Hell Villalona. Villalona, the strong righty for the Guelph Royals. And now the pitch. Right off the end of the bat. Left field, deep left field. A sack fly. It will score a run as Riso Farrell was unable to quickly make that throw into the infield. So now the Guelph Royals have a 2-0 advantage. So Chris Boato, the lefty Chris Boato, is warming up in the bullpen. So Angel Villalona, a sack fly to left field, will bring in a run and an RBI for Angel Villalona. Does his job, and now it's a 2-0 ball game. So Boato is warming up. He's number 22 for the Jackfish this season. The lefty from Alderson Broadus University. Played for the Herd last season. The Maple Ontario native will try to come in to save this Outing for Matt Klingersmith. He is warming up. Klingersmith, though, still on the mound, has now thrown 107 pitches. 60 of them which have been strikes, 47 balls. Through a seven and a third. That off-speed pitch outside high. Klingersmith starting to get a little frustrated with the calls as that one he thought was a strike missed outside. 3-0 count with one away. A runner on first base. One run has already come in. That one counts as a strike. Riley Perks. Not sure where he was going. Thought he was going to first base, but a 3-1. 3-1 count. One away. Now the 3-1 offering. Fouled back. Press box. Right over my head. And it'll roll down the parking lot side and improve the count to three and two for the Jackfish. 
Riley Perks' point streak player profile card showing he's 0 for 0 in the season, which is absolutely incorrect. He is 0 for 2 this afternoon. Runner going on the 3-2. Strikeout to second. Not in time, the runner's safe, but a strikeout recorded against Riley Perks. And there you hear it, PA announcer Rod Mahood pleasing everyone in attendance. The only thing more to do is win this ball game. Everyone's going to have supper tonight. Free chicken wings, compliments of Mama's Boys. Be sure to visit them at the corner of First and Woodlawn and redeem your coupon if you're in attendance this afternoon. Free chicken wings. A little blooper off the end of the bat. Klingersmith with speed across to the first baseman, Matt Schmidt, in time. So Klingersmith, a little bit of salvation to end the top half of the eighth. He gives up one, but he's able to keep only the Guelph Royals at scoring one. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. The Jackfish need a little help. Maybe they need a little Gloria. We go to the eighth, bottom half at the end of the top. It's 2-0, Guelph. So here we go in the bottom of the eighth. Matt Schmidt, the first baseman, swings at the first offering and pushes it foul to the left field side. Happy Father's Day. Yambatis, quick delivery, fast ball down the middle. As it looks like the closer for the Guelph Royals warming up in the bullpen. Stretching out. Yambatis. Able to battle through that one and get a end of the barrel of the bat on it, but it sends it foul. Schmidt this season, 264 batting average. Takes that ball upstairs. He's 9 for 34 and has four RBIs. Schmidt, though, started the season off 0 for 16, and that time he'll strike out for the first out of the bottom half. So now the third baseman, Nolan Pettapiece. And the Jackfish really start to need, really need to start getting a run together here. As he starts with a little bunt, it'll be a blooper. And he will easily make it there. And now the catcher slipped in the exact same spot as Matt Klingersmith. Maybe that's the play. Bunted two feet outside the batter's box, left side. It's like running on ice. We talked about how slippery and how tough this field is going to be to play on this afternoon. So that brings up Wilson Soriano, another speedster who plays shortstop. Needs a big time play here. 
Swings, high fly ball. The outfielder running. Angel Villalona trying to get it. Right to the bullpen of the Jackfish. And the Royals unable to get there in time. Oh, one count with one away. Trying to get something going here in the bottom half of the eighth. Scoreless against the Guelph Royals. The Jack Bishop have been shut out once at home this half, once this season. They go a bunt again. Beautiful blunt right up the third base line. And the Jackfish not able to get it past the infield, so let's switch things up and play small ball and let's keep it away from them. So now that brings up Caleb Furistaki as he'll pinch hit for Reese O'Farrell. So with that, it'll be a mountain visit as the Jackfish have a runner on first and second. The excitement is in the air here at Welland Stadium as the fans waited literally five hours for this moment, a chance to come back to the ball game. It'll be a mountain visit, then we'll be back here on Jackfish TV trying to climb back into the ball game. So that brings up Caleb Furistaki. Pinch hitting, we talked about for Reese O'Farrell. This is the bottom of the order for the Jackfish, one out. How about another bunt? Angel Villalona playing a little bit closer to the home plate. Shows bunt again, but unable to execute it. Home plate umpire going out, talking to the starting pitcher of Junior Yambatas. Yambatas this afternoon has thrown 59 strikes, 34 balls. Catcher this afternoon, Brendan Keyes, took that bun in the lower groin area as he is slow to get up. So an injury on the play to Brendan Keyes as he is slow to get up, sitting outside the left batter's box there. As he's back on his feet, Keyes, we mentioned, took that ball in the lower groin area, went off the dirt. And he seems to be okay. So Firostaki will settle back in. 0-1 oh, count with one away. I don't think it'll be a home run that wins this ball game as we've seen back-to-back -back bunts and Furostaki showing the same thing. The let's go Jackfish chance. Starting to get a little bit louder. Keeps him off the plate, moves it inside. 1-1 one one count now. Jackfish need to get a win and needs to snap this losing streak as they have no rest. They'll be back at it tomorrow night in Brantford. Tuesday night, they'll be in Guelph, and then Thursday night in Barrie as they warm up the plane for a little bit of a road trip. Firastaki, a beautiful bun all the way, and that'll load the bases. How about that? Three perfectly placed bunts by the Jackfish, and now the bases are loaded. Well, you, you can smell it, the Jackfish. It only took eight innings, but they figured out how to play here at Welland Stadium when it soaked. <laughs> All aboard here at Welland Stadium. Jackfish trail one nothing here in the bottom of the eighth. Yambatis, the pitch gets away from him. 
coming in, in time, safe at the plate. Yambatis doesn't believe it. The Jackfish runner from third, safe at, at the home plate, and that ties the ball game at one. Starting pitcher, Junior Yambatis could not believe it. As I thought it was 1-1, one, one, excuse me, they scored in the eight. That brings it back within a one-run game, as I totally forgot the Guelph Royals put up a run in the eighth inning. As I'm going to say, we don't have our score bug with us this afternoon. But the Jackfish have one out. They have a run on the board. They will not get shut out this afternoon. 2-1 ball game. So Yambatis off the end of the bat. Shallow right field. Will it get down in fair territory? No. Ball goes foul to move the count to 2-1. and one. Runners in scoring position. Second and third. As this is Brendan Nicholson at the plate. <laughs> Two and one count, one away as the rain begins to fall once again. Now the pitch. Outside gets away from the runner again. Although Wilson Soriano will stay at third base. So a little mix-up by me in the press box, of course. As I mentioned, it was 1-1. It is actually 2-1 for the visiting Guelph Royals. The fans were excited as I was. They thought it was tied. But now, a walk. So the count. We'll go to 4-1. And, and just like that, it'll be a call to the bullpen. We'll step aside. The Jackfish have the bases loaded as they go to the bullpen to replace the starting pitcher, Junior Ambatis. You're watching Jack. to the ball game is Evan Kisser, number 20. 
He's wearing 55 this afternoon. Point streaks got him as 20. Curtis Person made the adjustment. As he is the scorekeeper and put him down as 55 this afternoon. That pitch swung on off the end of the bat. The Welland Mustangs under 13 makes the catch well in foul territory. What a grab. Great job for the youngster from Todd Hill there. As the Let's Go Jackfish fans, chance continue. One and one the count with one out. It's a 2-1 ball game. Base is loaded. Downstairs, two and one. Two and one the count with one away here in a 2-1 ball game. Mattingly Romanen, the catcher at the dish. Let's it go for ball three. The Jackfish a ball away here from walking in. Another run. And it'll even the game up at two. Avid Kisser trying to keep the Royals on top. Here is the 3-1 delivery. Outside and the fans letting the home plate umpire hear it. Three and two count. What an atmosphere here at Welland Stadium tonight. <laughs> You would think it's a thirsty Thursday, but they are just faithful. <laughs> Good swing, fouled back, three and two. Three and two, one out. As the rain continues to fall and it gets a little bit harder here in the bottom of the eighth. Now the 3-2. Downstairs tie ball game. Soriano comes in to score. Gives a little high five to Greg McPherson, the clubhouse attendant. Greg has a few words with DeAndre Asbury Heath. McPherson, Greg McPherson, who comes to the team. Just an absolute thrill and an absolute great guy to have in the clubhouse. He works with the Niagara Ice Dogs, has Down syndrome and a part of GMAX with Extra Chrome. He's a great organization that is run here in the Niagara region. Players love to have Greg around the clubhouse and had a few words here with DeAndre before he steps into the batter's box. Takes an opening pitch from Kisser. Strike one. Glad you could be a part of this one. It's a thriller at the stadium. 2-2 two -two ball game. Jackfish and the Royals. And now the pitch. Foul the back. Into the parking lot. 0-2. Oh and, and now Asbury Heath has some work cut out for him. He's falling behind in the count. Andrew Mercier is on deck with Brandon Datsun. One out. Bases still loaded. Jackfish can do some damage here. They need a couple of timely hits. 0-2. Oh, Here's the pitch. Chopper, though. This could be really trouble for the Jackfish. That, not in time. So one run will score. Caleb Furistaki across the plate, and the Jackfish have the lead. So two outs, but we'll take it. The Jackfish, which could have easily turned into a double play ball. The throw, unable to be in time by the Royals. Cash is in Caleb Furistaki. The So a three-run bottom of the eighth inning. So far, brings up Andrew Mercier with two outs. Runners on the corners. DeAndre Asbury Heath running to second. In time. As Nicholson was a, had a little leadoff going home, but he went back to third base, and that got the catcher to throw to third. Villalona had to jump to make the catch. So now there's runners on second and third. The rain is just coming down heavily here at Welland Stadium. 
Mercier now takes a pitch upstairs, improves the count to one and one. Mercier all set to go against Kisser. Here's the pitch. Downstairs, two and one. Jackfish really coming alive here in the eighth inning, and this is what we've been waiting for. As two pitchers now warming up in the bullpen for the fish. And a right-handed closer warming up for the Guelph Royals. Twos across the board. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Mercier battling against Kisser here with a runner on second and third. Jackfish have battled back to have a 3-2 advantage. Now the pitch. Fouled right towards the bullpen. A lot of speed off that ball. Two and two, two outs. And now the pitch. A little chopper to the second baseman across. Mercier is retired, but it's a 3-2 Jackfish lead. An excellent half inning for the Jackfish. The Royals put up one in the top of the eighth. The Jackfish answer with three. We'll go to the top of the ninth. The Royals have one more chance to get back ahead of the fish or the game will be over. Top of the ninth when we come back. Off here in the top of the ninth as the field got a little bit glorious with Gloria. St. Louis Blues win song, of course, as the Jackfish trying to win and snap this losing streak. They have a 3-2 advantage going to the top of the ninth. Glad you could be a part of this one. Spencer Tangway and the rest of our team from the Jackfish here to call tonight's game. Sliced foul over the Jackfish bullpen to the Berman left field. A couple of guys that played for the Niagara Ice Dogs were St. Louis Blues Stanley Cup champions. Vince Dunn, Alex Petrangelo. And also, I'm just being told, Mike Van Ryan, who is an assistant coach, was also with the Ice Dogs. Fouled back, just caught the top of the safety netting. So now the count, one and two. 
against Rick Murray. Murray 0 for 3 this afternoon, has 3 RBIs. We'll start things off. As this is the bottom of the order. And an excellent position for the Welland Jackfish who lead this ball game 3 to 2. Jackfish were held off the scoreboard until that 8th inning where they put up 3. And now the pitch. New pitcher to the ball game is Chris Boato. As Matt Klinger Smith was able to go eight innings, two and two the count. Boato comes in with a 3.97 ERA. Looking for the save this afternoon. Right over the bullpen of the Jackfish. Actually went through the safety netting. As it's not tied tight, obviously, above the bullpen, right on the actual roof, and went right under the netting. As they're calling for a medic above the jackfish bullpen as a lady was hit viciously with that foul ball. So a very scary scene to the left of the jackfish bullpen. Count now three and two as that was taken for a ball. A very scary scene right above the bullpen and dugout of the jackfish. A fan struck by that pitch. A nice shot sent to the left field by Rick Murray. He'll improve the one for four this afternoon to get things going for the Guelph Royals. Training staff trying to tend to the fan who's been struck by that pitch. We'll keep an update on that. But now as everyone is looking at that fan, including Guelph Royals players, umpires, everyone wondering how she's doing. So they go back to check on Murray. At first base, Smith makes the catch. It looks like they're actually just gauzing up and putting a couple band-aids on the forehead of the fan. So it looks like it could be a cut as the ball, like I said, it didn't go actually through the netting. It went underneath the netting that is on top of the dugout. So that velocity lifted the netting up. Three to the score. Strike one called against Brendan Keyes. Keyes sets in 0 for 3 this afternoon as well. Batting 116. Has an RBI and he has Rick Murray on first base. Now the 0-1 with nobody out. Murray on first base for the Royals. Rain coming down hard here at the stadium. Now the 0-1 with nobody out. Chris Boato trying to earn the save for the Jackfish. They show bunt, but the ball is outside. Good work from Petapiece, though, to run in and try to cut off that bunt attempt. one one count. Check back at first once again. And this is the last thing this field needs is this rain that's coming down here in Welland. You take a look at the forecast, and it's actually looking quite good over the next couple of days, but this weekend being able to hold up. One and one with nobody out. Bunt shown, but it's fouled off the bottom of the barrel. Back to the safety netting, and now it's one and two with nobody out. Rick Murray on first. So the fans are applauding here for the fan who has now actually gotten up and they've gone up to the first aid room here at the stadium. Seems to be okay. One and two, nobody out. Murray. Looks like he's shown bunt, but that swing popped right off the end of the bat. Makes the catch, shallow left field, and that will retire Brendan Keyes. 
So Matt Pillarchuk comes up, batting in the top of the ninth inning, down to only two outs. A double play ball would end it for the Jackfish. Jackfish, by the way, could snap this four-game losing streak. They've lost their last four games. And they'll be back on the road tomorrow afternoon to kick off a three-game road stand. Tomorrow in Brantford, 7.30 first pitch. Tuesday night, they go to Guelph for the second part of this home-and-home. -home. And then Thursday night, they take on the very strong Barry Baycats at Coates Stadium, where they've really struggled so far. Right back to first, not in time. So the Jackfish will warm up the plane, head to the airport and take off this afternoon. One out. Still have an offer to pitch to Matt Pillarchuk. And now the pitch from Boato. Could be a double play ball to second. Across the diamond to first. The Jackfish win. Final score, the Jackfish win the ball game 3-2 on what an excellent, fun-filled day at the ballpark. It started bright and early. We thank all the fans and attendants who stuck it out. It started with a lot of rain. It ends with a lot of rain. We had a lot of fun and laughs in between. The Jackfish put up three in the eighth, and that's all that was needed. Final 3-2 with no bottom of the ninth needed this afternoon. So the final score, it is 3-2 in favor of the Welland Jackfish. The Jackfish improve this season to five, excuse me, six and seven. They avoid the five game losing streak as they will start on the road tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night rather, in Brantford and try to start another winning streak. On behalf of everybody, I'm Spencer Tangway. On behalf of the Jackfish, happy Father's Day. And we look forward to sharing more baseball with you right here from Welland Stadium next Saturday afternoon. It's a 105 start time on First Responders Day. Until next time, happy Father's Day. I'm Spencer Tangway. And remember, go Jackfish.